Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here, and today we are actually talking about Facebook because Facebook doesn't want transparency and misinformation tracked on their platform. Here's what's going on. This is coming from The Verge and other resources. I've actually talked about the group we're about to talk about before because quite frankly, I think they were doing the Cyber Lord's work. So here's what's going on. Facebook has banned the personal accounts of academics who researched ad transparency and the spread of misinformation on Facebook. Now, Facebook said that the group violated its terms of service by scraping user data without permission, but these academics say that they are being silenced for exposing problems on Facebook's platforms. And quite frankly, after you hear about this, I think you will agree with the academics. Now, the researchers were part of the NYU Ad Observatory. This is something I've talked about here on this podcast and video before. This is a project that basically was created to examine the origin and spread of political ads on Facebook. As this group explained in a blog post in May, their aim is to uncover who pays for political ads and how they are being targeted. Now, such work obviously has very important implications for understanding the spread of disinformation on Facebook as the company does not fact check political ads. And that is something that basically they've said that they might start doing, but it's not really there uh, from what we can see. So with that, to help their work, these researchers created a browser plugin called Ad Observer. I've talked about this in the past. Now that automatically collects data on what political ads users are being shown and why those ads are being targeted to those users. Now, as per the website for Ad Observer, the plugin does not actually collect any personally identifiable information, including user names, Facebook ID numbers, or even friend lists. Basically, you as a person have to opt in and do this. And that basically is permissions that are clearly laid out. So Facebook's argument falls flat, meaning I have to go to the Ad Observer uh, plugin. I can read the terms and conditions of what they will and will not take from me. I will accept that and I will install that to help the research that they clearly lay out. I don't see why that would be a problem or a violation of a user's rights since you have to, by default, opt in and install the plugin. It's not something they're doing automatically. Now, the data collected by Ad Observer is then made publicly available to researchers and journalists who use this information to basically reveal trends and problems on Facebook's platform. Now, the stories directly resulting from this work include Facebook's failure to disclose who pays for some of these political ads and basically how misinformation is basically uh, on the right is ha has been more engaging in terms of user interactions and misinformation coming from the center or the left. It's very interesting to look at this. You can go view this right now um, you know, at the NYU Ad Observer. It's fascinating. Now, Facebook offers some of this information voluntarily through its ads library, but it doesn't give you everything. For example, it doesn't share data about how ads are targeted based on users' interests. People can find this for themselves by clicking on the ads that they're shown, and it's this kind of data that was collected by the NYU. Facebook does provide information on ad targeting through a special research program called FORT, or F-O-R-T, but that is controlled and filtered by Facebook, so obviously it's kind of like you know the, the, the fox guarding the hen house there. So Facebook says that it banned the researchers because they violated the terms of services and that the Ad Observer plugin, quote, collected data about Facebook users who did not install or consent to the collection. Now, Facebook's wording suggests that the researchers were collecting data about private individuals without consent, but as reported by Protocol this past March, Facebook is actually referring to, and I quote, advertisers' accounts, including the names and profile pictures of public pages that run political ads and the content of those ads. The Verge reached out to Facebook to confirm this, but Facebook declined to comment. So, Obviously, this is a huge problem. This is a huge thing. This, If you are running an ad that is public and targeting things, you're basically opening yourself up, I think, to examination in the same way that if you're a politician running for office, your life becomes a lot more transparent than a regular private citizen. That is a choice you make to run for office. And in this vein, if I am going to the Ad Observer website, I am basically downloading this because I want to help the research. And I remember when I had actually uh, talked about this a while back, they had something like six to 8,000 people that had actually done and installed this to help them out and get that kind of information. So it stands to reason that there's more than that at this point as they've continued to grow. But again, 
everybody's opting in. So the only conclusion that, that I can think, you know, of, and it's my opinion, is that Facebook doesn't want the world to know this. Obviously, this has cost them dearly in the past when Cambridge Analytica broke and they had to pay $5 billion. Not that Mark Zuckerberg didn't make it up in the time he was in front of Congress. Literally, literally, you can look that up as he was actually answering their questions and the world realized that these congressmen and senators have no idea how to ask him questions, the stock started going up again. So, so by virtue of that, I think Facebook fears even more reputation damage. I have talked about them continuously on these kinds of things. I'm curious to see if this one gets me banned from their platform. Uh, you know, then again, I did do a video called It's Time to Put Mark Zuckerberg in Jail, and they haven't touched me, even though I've got, you know, I think, what, twelve or 13,000 followers on Facebook. So we'll see where that goes, but I'm, I'm very curious, uh, you know, to hear thoughts on this. But this is a huge problem because we need to really start getting a handle on this. We have a massive problem with misinformation and disinformation and social media is essentially not just driving that wedge into society, it's basically doing it at a super fast pace because now we have something we've never had before the technological age, which is virality on an instant scale. And if you think about it, any major politician, I don't care if it's former President Trump, President Biden, whoever it is, as soon as they put out a tweet or a Facebook post, they get millions of likes, follows, attacks, whatever it is, and that's what we're living with today. And so by virtue of that, you get that confirmation bias, you get that misinformation, you reinforce it, you share it, and you continue to drive that wedge. This needs to be tracked. And Facebook doing this, I think, is actually a disservice to society in general. So I hope they reverse this. That's a huge problem. Uh, you know, feel free to write your congressperson or Facebook on this one uh, because I think it's a very serious issue. But that is your news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter. Haha. <laughs> and always uh, feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everyone.